Hi, Dr. Mori, Uncivilized Vitality. Um, just a quick video. I was looking online. I got some notifications, some different news. You know, I keep up on um, nutrition and other uh, health-related uh, information. And I've seen this thing online. This is February, um, <clears throat> early February 2023. And there's a, a bunch of information going around about a new food pyramid that's coming out. And it shows um, cereals at the bottom and like eggs and meat at the top. And they're saying that this is the new food pyramid. It, it's taken out of context. It's not the new food pyramid. The, the, the USDA has not changed um, its recommendations as a, a base of grains and then to limit your fats, which is inherently wrong, as we know. But the new food pyramid uh, and the thing that they're taking slightly out of context or running with is that the government is now promoting the fact that like Lucky Charms is healthier for you uh, than steak. Little out of context, but um, not completely. Let me just read a little bit here. So um, they're using something called a, a food compass rating system. A food compass is a novel food rating system developed by researchers at Tufts University. By evaluating foods across nine domains and using a unique algorithm to determine a score, we can assign food compass score, FCS, between one and 100, with 100, 100 being the most helpful to nearly any food. Now, of course, <clears throat> the nine domains in this algorithm are proprietary, so Tufts University, I haven't been able to find it yet. But it is a little suspicious when you get to that. Research is supported by uh, National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, National Institutes of Health. Then there's some, some verbiage here about the funders have no role in the study, conception, or design, analysis, or interpretation, or presentation, or publication of any findings. I don't really buy that either. But let's just take a look at uh, a few foods that they did rate on their score uh, that people have did, made this chart up uh, to show it as a new food chart. That's just, some, that's just some hyperbole. However, the Food Compass score algorithm from Tufts University now places watermelon and kale each get a score of 100. Uh, remember, 100 being the most helpful uh, and the, uh, the lower towards zero, the least helpful. The lowest score on this chart was ground beef and cheddar cheese with scores of 26 and 28 respectively. Okay, watermelon and kale are better for you than ground beef and cheddar cheese. Uh, but I'm just going to read you this list from healthiest to least healthy. According to Tufts University's new food compass scale, watermelon, kale, frosted mini wheats, 87, unsweetened almond milk, 86, non-fat frozen yogurt, 80, Chocolate covered almonds, 78. Orange juice with calcium, 78. Honey nut Cheerios, 76. And a date, or dates, 76. Those are all green, meaning they are to be encouraged. The consumption of that is to be encouraged over foods that are to be moderated. So foods to be moderated. Sweet potato fries or chips with a score of 69. Millet with a score of 65. Egg substitute. Fried in vegetable oil, some sort of Franken food bullshit, 62. Skinless chicken breast, 61. Lucky Charms, 60. Whole wheat bread, 60. Canned pineapple in heavy syrup, 51. Boiled or poached egg, ah, finally real food, 51. Whole milk, 49. Almond M&Ms, 43. On a personal note, that's fine with me because I like almond M&Ms. Uh, moving on. Non-fat mozzarella cheese, 42. Ice cream cone with nuts, 34. Those foods are to be moderated. Now, foods you need to minimize quickly. Whole egg fried in butter, 29. Cheddar cheese, 28. And ground beef, 26. So, um, the NIH and the National um, Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, and uh, probably the AMA, Tufts University, are now indicating that that is their system for a food compass score to give food a rating for more healthful to least. And you see that it's uh, suspicious, uh, to say the least. I think that their nine-point algorithm, which is uh, proprietary as far as I know, can't find it, I think that includes one point of how much money we can make producing this non-food item. So, um, that's coming uh, pretty quick. It's also food that is a uh, huge profit margin. Uh, the, the government wants it out there. And the foods that actually produce health, we're at the, the bottom of that. So I wouldn't trust the math on that. History of the human species shows different. So very quickly, our uncivilized vitality, nourishment. But one of the pillars of health and happiness has three primary principles, right? Uh, the first one is real food. 
is vital. Vital mean pertaining to life, real food. Real food is vital. If it's produced, um, I don't want to get into semantic argument that's saying, you know, washing or, or cutting up meat and saving it or, or salting it to cure it is production. I'm talking about Pop-Tarts and uh, things that come in cans and boxes and plastic like, for instance, uh, Honey Nut Cheerios or pineapple in heavy syrup or egg substitute fried in vegetable oil. That shit's not real. Don't eat it. Second bit of advice we give you is to eat on purpose. There's a lot to unpack here, but eating on purpose would involve... Uh, not only uh, controlling your meal intake, but knowing what you're eating and the effects that this stuff has in your body. Is it something they've been, human beings have been eating for two, three thousand years? Probably safe. Is it something that's only been around since the 1960s and 70s uh, and has been subject to recall and is, uh, the availability is lockstep with our, our obesity and um, diabetes and heart and cancer uh, incidents? Is that all going up at the same time? I'm not claiming causation here. I'm just saying pretty strong correlation. Start to know what you're eating. Uh, eat on purpose. Know how certain foods make you feel. Certain foods, their effects on your body. And then the uh, last one um, of the primary principles is fasting. Occasionally, do not eat. Uh, we're just going to put a spelling by that because I got all worked up. Not sure if I'm spelling that. Uh, correctly. Uh, occasionally don't eat. Fasting, intermittent fasting, extended fasting, 5-2 uh, fasting, 12-12, 18-6, 16-8. Uh, no end of intermittent fasting um, ideas. Fasting is not just about weight loss and it's not starvation. There are some very critical distinctions, but occasionally don't eat. The human beings designed to not eat continuously from dawn till dusk, especially this kind of, of, of food uh, products that they're suggesting is more healthful. In no stretch of the imagination is a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios more healthful for you than real eggs, butter, cheese, and beef. And it'd take you just a few minutes of internet search or, or even uh, um, talking to an elderly family member to know that beef and cheese and sour cream and more um, carnivore centric or ketogenic centric diets or even Atkins uh, do not, despite all the, the uh, kerfluffle over the years, do not increase your risk of heart attacks or strokes. It's just, it's better for you. So uh, leave some comments if you want to disagree with uh, me about that, but check that out. Don't get too worked up. It's not actually saying you should eat more uh, Lucky Charms than um, fruits and vegetables and grains. Uh, this is a bit of hyperbole lately online. However, the source for that does make me very concerned as to the funding with this nine-point uh, algorithm to determine which foods are healthier. If a bowl of Lucky Charms is coming in as more healthy than, than a steak, uh, your, your algorithm is uh, just f***ed up. So good luck with that. Uncivilized vitality, nourishment is pretty simple. Eat real food, eat it on purpose, and occasionally don't eat. So take that advice, uh, check out some of our other videos. Hopefully we have a playlist somewhere with nourishment. And uh, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, share the channel, comment below, uh, all that YouTube stuff. All right, bye.